JBN to keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones and in the news. Security guard shoots self in the foot while servicing ABM. A security guard was taken to hospital for treatment after he accidentally shot himself in the foot while servicing an automated banking machine, ABM, in Santa Cruz, Santa Elizabeth on Saturday. A senior police source said that the incident, which reportedly happened shortly before 6 p.m., is under probe. The guard was reportedly a part of a crew of three, employed to a security company which provides money courier and ABM servicing. They were there servicing the ABM when the shooting happened, said the source. The guard was rushed to hospital for treatment. Gun found in open lot in Mandeville. Detectives assigned to the Mandeville Criminal Investigations Branch seized a gun in Artiste, Mandeville, Manchester on Friday. Reports from the police are that about 9.30 a.m., Lawmen were alerted by residents to remove a 9mm pistol that was found on an open lot. No one was arrested in relation to the discovery. Investigations are ongoing. St. Catherine man held with a legal gun. The St. Catherine South Police held a 39-year-old man with an illegal handgun last night during a special operation in Bamboo Ridge District. Reports are that about 10.45 p.m., a police team was on a special operation in the community near Old Arbor. The operatives were in search of wanted men, drugs, and illegal guns. The police team stopped a motor vehicle and a man alighted. He was searched and a Glock 19 pistol loaded with several 9mm cartridges was found on him. It was taken into custody by the police. The man was escorted to the Old Harbor Police Station and arrested for possession of a prohibited weapon and unauthorized possession of ammunition. He is to be questioned in the presence of an attorney for formal charges to be laid against him. 33-year-old man charged for Kingston gun attack. A 33-year-old man was charged following a shooting incident on Lenorel Street, Kingston on April 7. Charged with wounding with intent, unauthorized possession of prohibited weapon and unauthorized possession of ammunition is with Mario James, otherwise called Desi, of Belvedere Road in Red Hills, St. Andrew. Reports from Elliston Road Police saw that about 9.20 p.m., James and an accomplice allegedly armed with guns opened fire, hitting another man. The man ran and was chased, but collapsed in the vicinity of a police station. He was taken to hospital where he was admitted and treated. James was later arrested after it was pointed out during an identification parade on Tuesday, July 25. Violence as vendors on edge at Linstead Market. Popularizing the classic Jamaican folk song, the Linstead Market is famous for its supply for a wide variety of crops and traditionally cheerful atmosphere. But in recent times, a darker side of the landmark St. Catherine facility has been wearing its ugly head, crime. A flip of violence as vendors and patrons feeling fearful. Two vendors were killed in less than a week at the market in May and in June, more than a dozen vendors lost their stalls to arson. Three men were reportedly seen running from the scene after starting the blaze. A number of vendors declined to share their thoughts on the violence in the market recently, with the main reason being fear of retaliation. But willing to talk, a vendor operating near the market said the tension in the Linstead market and the surrounding area is palpable. The place just stands and stay away from the shooting where Ronya, the 47-year-old food vendor, who requested not to be named, said. Revealing that sales have slowed down because many regular patrons have been staying away from the market, the man said, I'm afraid for walk, I'm afraid for buy. I'm afraid of everything because everybody afraid for them life. People now move freely because I'm shooting a guan and things tense and people are toxic, and people will get shot and dead. So they must feel away. Another vendor, a 50-year-old woman who sells vegetables, said she is very uncomfortable with the situation. To be honest, right now I don't feel comfortable staying right here because of what taking place right now. It is not a safe place for us. But you know, because we have to come out, we just come out, she said. Noted that she's been making a living in the area for more than 15 years. When asked what she can do to protect herself while going about her business, the mother of five said, May only walk with Jesus. Another vendor selling clothes at the front of the market said that she feels nervous at the start of each day, aware of the dangers it could bring. Because we don't know who next and we still write yourself a sale and anything can happen. But we still have to come out and look for food, she stated, adding that she has been selling at that spot for over nine years.
The violence of the market is a part of a wider crime problem in Linstead that has members of the town's business community on edge. Over the past few months, there have been several cases of murder and shootings in Linstead, the most prominent of which was the June stain of well-known pharmacy operator, 47-year-old Delson White. White was killed while driving a Sonda Fit motor car along the Jericho Main Road. It was sponsored upon by a gunman in the vicinity of the Jericho Bridge. The gunman opened fire hitting White multiple times, killing the businessman. White's pharmacy is a short distance from the market. A security guard stationed there said that following White's murder, he was very much traumatized. The man, who has lived in Linstead for more than 40 years, said it's not the first time the town and the market in particular has seen an increase in violence. To me, I grew up in a system expecting all these things. My uncle used to tell me that he's going to sorry for us because the time will come and war and all these things take over the place. You're going to have family against parents. These young people now, parents been a whole heap of money and coming out of school and expecting them to let them do good. Instead, they are taking up the drugs. Many of them saying they don't want to work, he said. Bar Association questions amendments to retirement age for DPP and AUG. The Jamaican Bar Association is questioning the validity of the amendments to the Constitution, which will increase the retirement age of the Director of Public Prosecution, DPP, and the Auditor General, AUG, to 65 years and allow for the extension of their contract to 70 years. In a release yesterday, the Association was critical of the handling of the amendments, especially as they relate to the current DPP, Paul Llewellyn. It is also requesting that the government dispel the notion that the amendments were to extend the time for Llewellyn to continue in office and argued that the government's failure to exceed risk and widespread public distrust of the offices of the DPP and AUG. It has urged the government not to apply the amendment to the current DPP. The Bar Association also raised concerns about the validity of the amendments and questioned whether the manner and procedure in the way they were made contravened the Constitution. According to the release, the association is perturbed, particularly about the constitutional provisions dedicated to all the retirement age of the DPP may be extended, especially since issues related to the provisions could go before the court. JB is away from me reports that the issues arising from the passage of the bill may well be considered by the courts given a possible constitutional challenge. JB is therefore not only cautious in its pronouncements at this stage, but is also carefully assessing all the legal implications of these amendments and considering in detail all relevant issues arising from this still unfolding development, the release, signed by Bar Association President John Bassey, stated. The association called aspects of the changes disputable and highly undesirable. There was no opportunity in the lower house, from all reports, for any informed or prepared debate on the bill. There is no express provision for a consultation concerning an amendment of the subsection to increase the age of retirement. Indeed, all required for an amendment of the provision is the majority votes of members present in each house. The not unreasonable question arises as to whether the amendment route was invoked to circumvent the consultative procedure, the release said. It stated that under the Constitution, multiple extensions are not permissible, and the amendment is peculiar to Llewellyn, whose tenure was extended in 2020. This is a compelling basis for the increase to be regarded as effectively granting a further extension not provided for by the Constitution, the release continued. According to the release, all the change was done is reflective of the scant regard for the weighty matters of the amendments, and this facilitates a guaranteed planned outcome with only a parliamentary majority needed. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.